Hi, this is Shai Darby. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the Java Enterprise Edition. The Java Enterprise Edition is also known as Java EE. So Java EE is basically a collection of enterprise APIs for building applications. You can use Java EE to create different types of applications. So you can use it to build traditional web applications. You can also create special server-side applications that only run on the back end. And you can also create Java EE apps that provide a client interface for a GUI system. So there's a lot of different things you can build with Java EE. So let's take a look at the big picture as far as building different types of applications. So on the far left here, we have our user interface or our client tier. So you can build a web front end, or at the bottom here, you can have a Java Swing GUI front end. It can communicate across the network to your middleware. So these are components that will actually run on the back end server. So you can have, you can make use of servlets or JSPs. You can make use of Java server faces or JSF, or you can make use of RESTful or SOAP endpoints. I'll cover those in the following slides here. There's also what we call the EJB container. So the EJB container will basically hold special Java objects that contain your business logic. And finally, all the way on the back end, the far right, you have your resource tier or your data tier. So this is where you have your database, uh, your message-oriented middleware, or connections to any external system. So this is kind of Java EE um, at a very high level. And I'll walk through and talk about some of these technologies in the following slides. Two of the most popular components in the Java Enterprise Edition are servlets and JSPs. They basically serve as the foundation for creating web applications. So effectively, a web application is an system that will generate HTML pages on the fly. And you've already used web applications before. So if you've gone online to like an e-commerce site such as Amazon and ordered a book, you probably went to the site, you typed in the title of the book or the topic for the book, and then Amazon would give you a list of books that matched your topic or title. And then you can go through the process to actually purchase that book. All of those pages that you read or all of those pages that you view are actually generated on the fly based on your input and also based on information retrieved from Amazon's database. So we'll actually cover serverless and JSPs uh, in detail in lessons 26 and 27. Another component in the Java Enterprise Edition are EJBs or Enterprise Java Beans. You can make use of Enterprise Java Beans to contain your business logic. So you can take some Java code, deploy it as an Enterprise Java Bean, and it can be deployed on a remote server. And then you can have client programs that will call the EJB to retrieve data or perform operations. You can think of EJBs as simply like an enterprise version of RMI. So the same concepts of client server development with RMI, you can apply the same thing to EJB just on a different level, and they have a different approach for developing and deploying the EJBs. Uh, we'll actually cover EJBs uh, in Lesson 31. Java EE also has support for the Java Message Service, or JMS. JMS basically gives you support for message-oriented middleware. In effect, you can send messages back and forth in an asynchronous fashion. So JMS is primarily used for integrating with external services. So basically what you'll do is you'll create a message, you'll publish it to a queue, and then you can have another application that will subscribe to that queue and read messages from the queue. And this all can happen in an asynchronous fashion, meaning that the producer and the consumer, uh, they don't have to be online at the same time. They can come online at different parts of the application. And this is primarily used for back-end systems, high-volume systems, and so on. Uh, we actually cover JMS when we move into Lesson 30. Java EE also has support for web services. You can build SOAP web services or RESTful web services. So what exactly are web services? You can think of it as like a form of distributed computing. So you have a client and you have a server and they're located on remote machines and they need to communicate with each other. The very nice thing about web services is that you can have clients and servers written in different languages. So I could have a client program written in Java that can communicate with a server program written using .NET or PHP or Python. So that's the real portable nature of this um, um, technology platform. We'll actually cover RESTful web services when we move forward to Lesson 33. So that was just a quick overview of some of the key components. Now you may wonder, okay, I want to build a Java EE application, but where will I run the application or where will I deploy it? Well, for that scenario, you need to make use of a Java EE server. So Java EE is a standard from Oracle. 
And basically what the standard is that they spec out exactly what the technologies are and what the technology should provide. So then you have various server vendors who will actually implement the Java EE standard. So as a result, your Java EE application is portable. So that means that you can create your Java EE application, deploy it onto one server, and maybe six months or a year later, you can take that same application and move it to another server. So the key thing here is that there's no vendor lock-in and then you have a large number of server uh, vendors that you can select and choose from. As I mentioned, there's a large number of server vendors that you can choose from. So here is a short list of some of the Java EE application servers. So IBM WebSphere has a Java EE server, also JBoss App Server. Oracle has two. They have the Oracle Glassfish server and the Oracle WebLogic server, and there's many others. So I always say go to Google, type in the word Java EE server, and you'll get a list of all the different Java EE servers that are out there. The nice thing about it, though, is that, again, your application is portable. So you can create your application, deploy it onto server A, and at a later time, move it to server B without having to make any major changes because they all support the Java EE standard specification. Well, that wraps up our video. In this video, I gave you an overview of the Java Enterprise Edition. And all of the following videos will drill down into each one of the technologies and we'll see them working in action.